All right, part three. Everyone has made it to the third and final part of our video series here. We're doing a beautiful tropical scene. Um, let's get right into it here. Um, you'll hear like a lot of artists, uh, watercolor artists, professionals, a lot of times you hear them say that sometimes a watercolor painting can like take on a uh, unfinished look or an unpleasant look while you're painting or while we're painting. And I think what they're, a lot of times what they mean, and it's very true, is when you're painting a water, uh, watercolor painting especially, um, uh, with, um, let's say, the glazing technique. With the glazing technique, you're go uh, we're, we're going with all light values first to start with. So what happens is, we're looking at it right now. This is actually dry. We let this dry um, overnight, actually. So now the paper is completely flat again. I'm using the uh, gummed paper, Arches uh, gummed um, watercolor paper. And um, so once it dries overnight, the, the sheet goes back to a nice flat state. So it goes back and stretches back out completely. And uh, it's great to work on when it's nice and, and flat like this. So in any case, that unfinished look or unpleasant look sometimes is when we have a watercolor and we're doing like our second glazing. So let's say our first glazing is just the really light washes. Um, and then maybe we go over with a second glazing like this. Then it's then it's looking, it's coming together and looking a little better. But still, when you're in the middle of painting it like this, when it dries now in this state, completely dry, it looks a little better. But when you're in the process of painting this layer or this glazing, the watercolor can really look like it's not a successful looking painting because you're, we're missing the darker tonal values in the picture that give it that real like realistic or believable look to it. So I guess what I'm trying to say is when you're in the middle of your watercolor never get discouraged and that's even if you're doing like uh, the direct approach of painting like the a la prima style or if you're painting in your glazing technique never get discouraged. You always have to wait till the very end of the painting when you're just about finished to say okay let's look at it now and look at it and say does this look like like it's coming along really good or maybe it is a bad painting sometimes all of us paint a painting it just doesn't come out good and it's no big deal we just take it we throw it on the side of the pile uh, of the paintings that didn't come out so good we put it over there and then uh, we look at it you know a couple of days later or a week or two later and we can look at it and say what well, did we do good or you know we can learn from it but um, again we to really let um, to really see the finished look of a painting, you have to almost complete it all the way through, and and we don't want to get we don't want to get upset or frustrated when we're in the middle of a watercolor painting because a lot of times it doesn't look good in the middle in the middle processes of it. So that's just a really helpful tip. I've heard a lot of great artists say that professionals um, through my time of watching DVDs and books and stuff. So that being said, that's a real big help to where if you're painting watercolors and you're starting to um, you know do finished paintings like this and you're kind of maybe not doing as many um, small compositions and you're getting into larger paintings like this, this is when, you know, when you're in the middle of your painting, don't don't criticize it, your own painting. Just keep going, keep doing what you know is the, the process. So here the process was, if you haven't seen it, part one will show you how we sketched this all out and we picked out our colors of what we're going to use. We show, I showed you the painting that I'm working from. Uh, it's my mother's painting that she did many years ago when she was in high school. And we're just copying that painting. And so we copied down the, we made a list of the colors like that. And um, we did our second video, uh, the second part, part two, we got in our um, second layer, our second glazing, which is the middle tones here. And now part three, we're going to put in the darks. So now when we put in our darker tonal values, you're going to see that the painting is going to take on a really phenomenal look. It's going to look much more finished, and it'll really be the, the, the finishing touches and accents to the painting. And uh, again, I'm going to look at that painting across from me, and that's going to be my guide. So I'm just going to get right into it with the brushes. I'm using round brushes, Kalinsky Sable, Sable brushes, uh, Da Vinci Maestro uh, brushes, and the Scotta Travel brushes I use mostly. And um, we'll start in and we'll, we're going to be remembering that our paint has to have, we have to have moist, uh, moist goopy paint. 
it's fresh squeezed out of the tube to do this glazing especially um, because we're going to use darks, the, dar the darkest darks in the picture right now. So we can't, we can't like start going like this and using this here to get our darks. We have to go in and be able to make our darks like that. And even still go right into the paint with almost no water. So that in that case, we would rinse off our brush in our water bucket, dry off our brush on a little bit of tissue or a sponge. We could use a sponge, dry off the brush on a sponge or some tissue. And then we can go straight into the paint. We can mix it up straight like that. And then right onto the paper. And then we do the same process. Rinse off the brush, dry off the brush a little, and go into the paint and then we can mix a little bit on the palette as well to get our darks and we use a lot of paint hardly any water and that's the consistency that we need now for this portion of the painting where we're going to do the darks so let's get in and we'll, we'll start doing the darks and you can mix up the darks try to when you're doing darks in a painting, try to mix them up. Use repeating colors you've used in the painting. So here I'm going to try to follow the painting as close as possible. So I'm using cobalt blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue. my brush off. And again I'm mixing uh, the darkest darks in my palette. Um, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, a little bit of alizarin crimson. And then we can vary the, the darks too. So here we'll go a little lighter. Now we'll negative shape, shape paint just to get a couple. Just to make that look like a believable bush or some trees and, and things over here. And we'll do the same over here maybe. We'll take the sharp, sharp pointed brush and if we do a little bit of that, that detail it makes it a little more believable. You can go back in and charge with some more color. Here, alizarin crimson, maybe a little bit of burnt umber, and we'll do a little, we've got some of that, bar, like maybe the, the barn wood. Here. Then we can go in with a shadow color, maybe um, some burnt umber. And I'm going to move through this kind of quickly now, just so you have the idea of how I, I'm going to do all the darks in this painting. Um, but since it's a three-part series here, I don't want to make it, you know... Another, do another part, make it, you know, four parts, so I'll make, I'll try to go quicker here, so I'm just going to
I'm going to try to sort of get the darks in here just so you get an idea of what the paint is going to look like with the darks. And again, I'm going to keep I see some uh, cadmium red here in the in the so there's kind of like a warm feel to the darks. So you can you can make your darks even warm too by adding some red. Your shadows. So your shadows can be warm shadows too. By adding some warmer colors like red or yellow or gold. So the sun is coming from the top or this side of the picture going this way for the most part. Um, But this painting, I'm painting it just like I see it in the, in the, the original painting. So, um, light was not a critical part of the picture when this painting was done originally. So, we're kind of being a little more freer with our shadows. So, if the shadows aren't exactly the way nature would, the na nature would have it, that's okay. We're just copying the painting. So you can see here I'm spending some time on the, the building, the house here. Maybe we'll go over here. We'll do some interesting colors here. Burn umber in uh, French ultramarine blue. I see a dark spot on the uh, Dry off the brush a little bit. Then we'll, we'll try to do a shadow, maybe a little bit of red and And this is sort of getting to look exciting. This is the colors that were in the original painting. And again, we used, said the, the beautiful red and green complementary color scheme just looks fantastic and gives the painting a real exciting look. And And you can see I'm probably I'm working the I'm working around the painting because I'm I'm trying to let things dry. So I'll work over here a little bit, let this start drying, come back over here, work over here, or you know I worked over here. Then I let, I'm letting this dry now. I'm working over here. So when you're doing your darks in your in your glazing technique, when you're doing your darks, you can move around your painting and you let things you know dry a little bit as you're going. So you do a little bit in one section, then you move over to another. And then you'll find that you can go back and touch up a little bit in certain sections here and there um, without having it um, cause um, problems with things uh, uh, blossoming and bleeding into the different colors and, and so forth. So that's all I'm doing here. Um, so now I'm trying to keep aware of my time that I have. So I'm using some French ultramarine blue and burnt umber and some Viridian green. And I'm going to try to get some of these interesting 
brush marks. These are just, you know, kind of maybe these are just uh, so I'm not going to get overly too concerned um, I'm graying down the colors a little bit so instead of just using straight out of the tube color I let some of the colors just mix a little bit on the palette and we can we can get into some interesting so here there was some now, now here is a good thing too is to change brushes um, I have a needle point brush here This is an Alvaro Cassignet uh, needlepoint brush. This is great for the fine details. So then I can m change the uh, the look of my calligraphy, if you want to call it, in the painting. So I don't. If I keep using the same brush here the whole time with the same size brush, then all there's going to be no variation in these like branches and things. So if I switch around and use a little different brush now I get a different texture or look so that it's not going to be all the same and that just gives it more of an interesting feel to the painting so we'll keep going here there's some thicker branches over here so I will do this over here and again this is we're going to move quickly I'm not going to try to I would take my time more if this was Again, I'll mix up some more French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and a little bit of lizard and crimson. And you just kind of look at it and mix, in, mix it on the palette and see when it looks pretty good. And then here, this was a darker branch here. But you could probably see that now the, the painting is really looking like it's like getting a finished look to it. And I'm probably not going to have to do a whole lot more convincing here that this is really the, this is like where you see the painting coming together and looking really, really good. So that, that's, why, that's why I always say don't get worried when you're in the middle of your painting because um, that's it's not going to always look great when you're in the middle of the process of, of painting your painting as far as especially the glazing technique the glazing technique is if you're using the a la prima approach then your painting sort of looks finished in the beginning or as you're starting because you're really getting everything completed in your first wash or your first uh, so here now I'm just doing some you can take your time a lot more on the branches of the uh, palm trees. I'll mix some green. So I'll gray down some green with a little bit of my darker mix. And again, I kind of rushed through these palm trees. So maybe I'm just trying to But this works sometimes, even if you paint something underneath, and then when you go over with your darker mixture, it looks much better now. Like Now that I'm doing these extra darker tonal values on these palm trees, now they're starting to look more interesting. And That's why, again, I say, I say don't worry too much when you're in the middle of your painting. Wait till the end process, and then you can kind of see it at that point. And then here we're going to do some more shadowing here. So maybe there's a little bit of shadowing on this tree. We'll try to 
do the same thing we're looking at in the painting. In the painting there's a little bit of that alizarin crimson. And then there's some really interesting uh, And then here you would be able to go back as well. So I'm drying off my brush a little more here. You can go back in and when this dries and do the fine hash marks on the tree for the bark. Once, once that dries there. So here there's some dark, a little bit of blue, shadow color, blue, cool. my brush off, dry it off a little. And that's what I'll do. I'll come back in once this dries. So you can do some really cool shadow work where you do a dark a dark line down this side of the trunk of the tree. Then you rinse your brush off, dry it off a little, and then when you go down next to that darker line you kind of fade it into the middle of the um, tree trunk and that'll give you like a rounded kind of feel. Again I'll let this dry, I'll come back, I'll do those little small fine uh, barks, bark uh, on the tree, the fine bark marks. I can do a few over here. You can do a few here and there maybe. And then the, the tree would be a little darker underneath here. So you can add some uh, darker shadows probably under the, the palm tree in this section there. That, that works. And then we can add in a little bit of just interesting color. Maybe there's some interesting colors. That'll bring the um, a small focal point to the to the uh, palm trees. And I go with an uneven look. So instead of doing try to keep things non-symmetrical. in crimson just to tie that in with the, uh, the the colors we did down here in the foreground All right, I hope everyone had fun. Glazing technique works great. You can have a, a, a great time of creating some beautiful paintings. The only issue I see here right now is I went in here when it was a little too wet with the uh, darker blue blue colors under here with my dark with my um, reds and oranges. So when that happens, you can just quickly take a tissue and uh, lift up the paint, and then I would just do the same thing over the top again once it dries. So I'll let this dry for a half an hour, and I'll go back in and I'll do that same exact thing where I'll put in some nice red and, and um, orange spots of colors underneath the um, uh, leaves of this these beautiful palm trees. 
Um, but right now, the, it was starting to lose control and you know blossom and cauliflower out the, the paint. So that, that, that was looking unpleasant. So your tissue is always a great help if you see something getting out of control. Um, you can always dab it up if you can carefully. And, um, and then come back in and fix it when, when the painting dries a little more. Okay, again, everyone have a great day, evening, and morning. We'll see you on the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.